What's going on, everybody? So, one of the things that from the very beginning about my channel is I did not want this to be a soapbox. I didn't want to simply be a person who's talking at everyone. I wanted this to be a channel. I wanted this to be a place where we talk together. You know, one of the very early interviews, streams, collaborations that I did is Theo from Clemente Collector had me on his channel. And he asked me a bunch of questions. One of the questions that he asked, which by the way, I, I, I would recommend uh, subscribing to Theo's channel if you haven't. He's a great guy. I consider him a friend. We've gotten to know each other really well since we... Uh, first, he first had me on his channel for this interview. Anyway, so I was asked by Theo, hey, so like, how do you kind of envision your channel? Like, what what do you want your channel to be about? Like, what what are the goals of the channel? Why did you start a channel? And one of the things I said, or what I said was, you know, the show Cheers. And he's like, yeah. I said, I want my channel to be like Cheers. It's where everybody goes, everybody knows your name, everybody communicates, like a collaboration hub of fellow collectors. See, Facebook has a lot of different Facebook groups where people can post things and that's great. Um, but the beauty of something like YouTube is that I can go into so much more depth with video than just posting like a comment or uh, posing a question. And so it allows for more in-depth communication. But that's how I see the channel. And, and I see my role as sort of like the moderator of the channel. So when people reach out to me and they say, you know, repeatedly, hey, you know, this is what I think about this, or why aren't we talking about this, or this is a topic we should be discussing. I'm listening. I have read every single comment, even the ones that aren't very nice, on this channel for every video. And one of the things I really like is that I get so many comments. Now, I've responded to every single comment that the YouTube filters hasn't filtered out. I have to admit, I'm spending a lot of time on comments and it's getting really difficult to keep up, which is a good thing, but it's also a difficult thing. And I'm going to continue to do my best to stay up to speed on responding to people. I used to respond quickly. It's starting to take me a little bit more time because there are times where I'm doing like dad duties and I get a little backed up with, you know, my responses. So it's something I'm going to continue to make a priority, but the point that I'm making is that I read every single comment and I take every single comment to heart. Unfortunately, I even take some of the not so nice comments to heart, probably more than I should. But something that people have been saying to me recently, they've said repeatedly, we're talking too much about Hall of Famers. Vintage cards are great but you don't have to only collect Hall of Famers. And quite frankly, it didn't used to be that way, in my opinion. I think the phenomenon of only Hall of Fame collecting comes from PSA set registries. See, PSA makes a new registry you know, category and then people wanna fill their registries so they can be on the, the PSA registry. And some people think, I don't get that. You know, I personally don't have anything on the PSA set registry, but I know that that's fun for a lot of people and that's totally cool. And quite frankly, it's a cool place to see other people's collections because the pictures on there of some of these people's collections are insane. But there are a lot of really, really good baseball players that are not, that are not Hall of Famers. You know, growing up, I, you know, I watched a lot of Giants games and I really liked Will Clark, who I've mentioned on the channel. I really liked Matt Williams. I collected those guys' cards. They're not Hall of Famers, but they were really good players. 
I mean, I, as a Yankee fan, you know, I love the fact that every time Paul O'Neill made an out, he looked like he was ready to break a bat over his knee. I love that guy's intensity. I love that guy's effort. I love Tino Martinez and Bernie Williams and Jorge Posada. And some of those guys that were integral parts of the team, but aren't Hall of Fame players. They're still really good players. And there are a lot of really good vintage players that people may not be collecting. And they're not collecting them because they're not Hall of Famers. But they were really good. So what I did, based on your feedback, based on people reaching out, and, and I heard it enough times, I'm like, okay, let's do it. I went to the 50s and the 60s, and I made a long list of really good players who aren't in the Hall of Fame. Now, I think some of these guys will get into the Hall of Fame, which is another reason why they might be worth buying, because a lot of guys, when they make the Hall of Fame, they suddenly go on that PSA set registry. People that are Hall of Fame collectors go after them. So they might be a good buy right now. And I don't think they're all going to make the Hall of Fame, but I think some of these guys will make the Hall of Fame and they were really good players. So I go through 10 really good players from the 50s and 60s. I had a long list and I narrowed it to 10 I thought would be the most interesting and diverse. And then what I did is I featured three really cool cards for each of them. So you're about to see a list of 10 really good players, some of which I think have a chance at the Hall of Fame at some point through the Veterans Committee, and three really good cards of theirs that I think are pretty cool. So check it out. Keep telling me what you want content on, because this is a channel for a lot of collectors. This is not just what I'm interested in. This is what we are interested in. Check it out and tell me what you think. All right, so the first guy up was a seven-time All-Star. One time was the AL MVP, won the NL Rookie of the Year. Two times led the American League in home runs, led the American League in RBIs. And six times he had 30 or more home runs in a season. So who do you think that is? Well, a really, really good player who a lot of people think will eventually make the Hall of Fame, and that's Dick Allen. Now, I think so many people are convinced that he's going to make the Hall of Fame to a certain extent. I wonder if some of that is already built into the price of his cards because his cards aren't particularly cheap. So the first card up, is his rookie card. It is a two-player card. This one in a 7.5 sold for about $150, but a 7.5 in a card from 1964 is a really good conditioned card for $150 of a really good player. My favorite of his cards is the 65 tops with the rookie trophy. And you can see that that one sold for not much less. Now, one of the reasons that it sold for a lot is because it's his first single card and also because it's a really cool card. But the 66 tops is also really nice. Now, if we look at this one, this is in an eight. So one of the reasons it's about $100 is because it's in an eight grade. The one in the middle is a seven grade. But those are three really cool cards of a really good player that, again, not a Hall of Famer yet, but I think he's worth collecting. Next player up. Went to 11 All-Star Games, won an NL MVP, five-time Gold Glover. He won an NL RBI title, and he won a World Series. A really, really good player, hitter and defensive player. See if you can figure out who it is. Well... It's a name a lot of us know, and we don't just know him because of baseball. We know him because of some of the things that he did later in life as well. And if we look, Ken Boyer, that's a really cool-looking rookie card, in my opinion. 
It's a 55. And I really love the 55 and 56 sets, as I've mentioned many times. So again, here's his rookie card. And it goes for about $150. Now, that one's a six. So a recent six is about $150 now. A really, really good player and a, a very well-known name. Now, the 56 obviously has the same you know, portrait part of it. And you can see what that one goes. And that's also a six. You can see the drop-off from his rookie card to his second card. Both, I think, are very cool cards and are... You know, and the 58, I chose the 58 because I think that is such a cool card with his hat on, kind of crooked, super cool. That one's in a seven for about 50 bucks. So Ken Boyer, will he make the Hall of Fame? Mm, I think he's a little bit of a longer shot than Dick Allen, but a very good player. Has a chance, I think. All right, next up. My fourth clue is going to probably give it away for most of you. He's a three-time All-Star, won seven gold gloves, and won two World Series. But one of the things that the Hall of Fame recognizes are those who made major contributions to the game. And this guy made a lot of contributions to the game, especially for player rights. Now, a very, very good player in his own right, and you know, went all the way to the Supreme Court working to get, you know, free agency rights and player rights and union rights for major leaguers. So his rookie card, which is a gorgeous card, look at that one in a six. It's a 58 tops. And in a six, it recently sold for $62. A 1958 Tops Kurt Flood rookie card for $62. Now, I also really like his 1960 card. And again, a, you know, a drop off in price. That's also a six. Oh, no, sorry. That one's a five. The 60 is a five. So that's his third card. But isn't that a cool looking card? Again, I like how prominent the Cardinals logo is on all three pictures. Um, and then the 65, which I think is a super cool card. That one's a little bit pricier because it's a 7, but still a really nice card in the 65 set. So Kurt Flood made major contributions to the game, was a very, very good player, and very affordable. All right, next up. Here are my clues. Four-time All-Star, 288 career wins. That's a lot of wins to not be in the Hall of Fame yet. 2,200 strikeouts, 3.34 career ERA, and then also made a major contribution to the game because of the revolutionary surgery that he went under, which has really changed the careers for a lot of pitchers, and that's Tommy John. We all know of Tommy John's surgery. Well, he was a really good pitcher. Almost 300 wins. Well over 2,000 strikeouts. I mean, a really good player. He did pitch for a long time, but thanks to the surgery where he risked his career over. Now, this is his rookie in a seven, and it recently sold for about 70 bucks. I think he has a, a very good chance of making the Hall of Fame. Now, his second-year card is a 65 tops, and that one's an 8. So you can see, you know, anytime you get a card in the 60s and an 8, it's going to have a pretty good amount of value. So, you know, it's not cheap, but you don't have to buy an 8. And then I thought the 71 was a cool-looking card. I love how the crowd's in the background. The team name really pops off of the black border. And this one, this one is in a, uh, is that a seven? I mean, it's a, but that's such, such a brutal set, right? All right, next player. Three-time All-Star. Two times led the American League in ERA. Has 229 career wins. An ERA, career ERA of 3.3. 2,416 strikeouts and had three times 
that he led the American League in shutouts. Another recognizable name, very, very good pitcher. So Luis Tiant here, I mean, that's his rookie card, which I think is a pretty cool-looking card. I like the 65 set, as I've mentioned. And his rookie card... Now, the one I'm going to show you is a 6.5. And it's still only like 45 bucks in a 6.5. I mean, this was a very, very good pitcher. And his rookie card... It's $45 in a 6.5. Now, the 66, the one I'm going to show you here, is a 6. Now, I think that's a cool-looking card, too, but look at that. His second-year card in a 6 from 1966, $17, almost $18. Again, to get a card graded at PSA, it's about 25 right now. So keep that in mind whenever we see any of these prices. I also liked the 68. Now, the 68 that I'm showing you is in an 8. So the reason that it's a little bit more is because it's a pretty high grade. And it's tough to get 8s in the 68s. So, but very affordable. All right, next player. Nine-time All-Star. Led the American League in home runs one year. A different year, he led the league in RBIs. Nine times he had 25 or more home runs in a season. Five times he had 100 RBIs in a season and three times he was in the top five in mvp voting though he never won he was in consideration multiple times another recognizable name in rocky calavito now i think the 57 well the 57 set already has a ton of hall of famers in it and i think most people don't expect rocky calavito to get in but you never know the Veterans Committee has changed. The format changed, just changed. And in a year and a half, they're going to meet again to do voting. So whether that format affects who gets in will be interesting to find out. So this one's a six for $76. I really like the 58 as well. I think it's a cool card. He kind of pops off that yellow background. And that one's in a five. But look at what his cards are going for. His rookie card and his second year card in pretty solid grades of a six and a five. And then the 59, I like it's a little bit of a tighter shot. The first two aren't, so I thought it'd be cool to get a card where it's a little bit closer on him. You could see him a little bit better. You know, and some of his cards say Rocco and some say Rocky. And, you know, this one in the 59 that I'm going to show you in here in a second, that's a six. So you can get a, you know, a really, really good player in a six from 1959 for $27, and it's $25 to get a card graded at PSA. All right, next player, four-time All-Star, but a slugger. He led the National League in home runs once, in RBIs once, hit almost 300 for his career, four times had 35 or more home runs, and five times had 100 or more RBIs. So who do you think this is? This was a slugger who, man, when he was hitting, he was hitting hard. And it's Ted Klazuski. Now, Ted Klazuski's rookie card is from that 48. A lot of people now recognize it as a 49 set, but it's that Leaf set. And some of the cards in that set, I think, are okay looking, some not so much. I, I actually like this one. I like that blue background. I like how his name jumps off of the color there. A Ted Klazuski, 48 slash 49 leaf, $210. And that's in a six. Now, I'm a fan of his 51 Bowman. This 51 Bowman's in a 7. So anytime you're talking about a card from, you know, 75 years ago in a 7, it's going to not be cheap, but you don't have to buy a 7. I'm just showing you what even good grade ones sold for. How about a 53 Tops? I liked the look of that card. I chose that one because I thought it looked cool in a 6 for 90 bucks. I mean, 
those are some pretty darn cool cards of a big time player. Next up, a four time all star, but look at the number of hits 2,757 career hits. Not quite that 3,000 magic number. Won a gold glove. Nine times had 20 or more stolen bases. Eight times had 90 or more runs. And four times had 200 or more hits. So who is this? Well, you're going to recognize the name if you haven't figured out who it is yet. Kind of an all-around player. Veda Pinson. I really like the looks of his rookie card. Now, there are a couple of fairly big rookie cards. from the. They're not huge, but the 58 set has... You know, Orlando Cepeda, and it has Roger Maris, and it has Veda Pinson. And look at what his rookie card in a six goes for, under 40 bucks. Now, I thought the 1960 card was cool looking, so I thought we could include that one as well. Again, this was a really good five-tool player. And that 1960 is in a 7 grade. And then I really liked the smile on that 63. And that one's also in a 7. And it's tough to get 7s in the 63 set. And this is a Veda Pinson, and it's 25 bucks, The same cost to get the card graded. That's just wild to me that cards would sell for what... It costs for the grading, and they were really good players. All right, next up, we've got a seven-time All-Star, an NL MVP, two gold gloves, six-time stolen base leader, three-time World Series champ, and nine times he stole 35 or more bases. So again, we got a guy who was dangerous on the base paths. So we got Maury Wills. Now, the cards that I'm going to show you for Maury Wills are interesting. And that first one that I just showed you, his his quote-unquote rookie, is the 63 Fleer, which is the, you know, it says on there as MVP, because that's right when he won the MVP. And that one's in a 7. And in a 7, it's just over $100. Now, the interesting thing about him is he showed up on a card in the 1960 set. So this is a card where Aparicio's stealing a base in the World Series, and the guy covering the bag who's actually better pictured there is Maury Wills. And that's in a six, and look at what that sold for. Some people consider that really kind of almost like his rookie card, but then there's the 61 post serial. So well before the 63 Fleer came out, the 61 Post Serial in a 7. And those are hard to find in a 7 because of the perforation and stuff. But $72. Last player of my 10, four-time All-Star, won an NL MVP, won a Cy Young. In fact, I think it was the first ever Cy Young Award. He won the Rookie of the Year. He led the majors in wins once and led the majors in strikeouts. He played two years in the Negro Leagues that he didn't get major league time with. And then he also missed two years in the military. This is a really, really good pitcher who missed time for the Negro Leagues and time in the military. And that's Don Newcomb. Now, his rookie is in the 1950 Bowman set. And you can see that card there. So look at three of his pretty cool cards. Now, Don Newcomb's rookie card in the 1950 set, that's a 5.5, sold for about $280. Such a cool-looking rookie card, I think. But not as cool as his 51 Bowman. How cool is that card? And that's in a 6 I mean, that's a beautiful card, the 51 Bowman, of a really, really good player. I mean, he had that MVP season where he was just unbelievable. And then I also like the 56. And the 56 there in a five is 50 bucks. Really 
cool cards of a really good player. Now again, for me, these are 10 really good players. No, they're not Hall of Famers. Will some of them get get in? I believe some of them will. But we don't have to just be collecting Hall of Famers. We can be collecting really good players, and they're a bargain, as we just saw.